Hello everybody, welcome back. Greetings from Kyoto once again. So guess where I am guys? Yes, I am kind of in the mountains. I guess it's the mountains, yeah. But this is the site of one of the most popular temples in all of Japan, Kiyomizu Dera Temple. And it stands right over there. I'm not gonna actually go inside today. The last video I did kind of ended when um, I got to the streets, one of the streets leading to the temple. And since it's like uphill all the way to the temple, I thought I reversed because I will be huffing and puffing all the way down, uh, all the way up. So instead I thought <laughs> I walk up here by myself and then we'll go down. Now, if you're wondering what all the tourist groups are around me, they're actually um, kids and they're on excursions. Oh, here. Oh, it's quite windy up here. Sorry about the sound. I don't know if you can see Kyoto Tower in the distance over there. That is where Kyoto Station is. But you see how Kyoto is surrounded by mountains? Yeah, this is the reason why it's super hot during the summer. The heat gets trapped inside the city. Uh, I do have some history about the Kiyomizu Temple. Kiyomizu Dera or Kiyomizu Temple means a pure water temple and it was uh, founded in the year 780. So it's a very very old temple and in 1994 the temple was added to the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So if you've never been here I definitely recommend you guys visit this temple. Okay so what this video is all about today is taking a walk along the streets leading to the temple. Uh, some people don't have any interest in temples and I, I was the same way when I was a kid. Wow, look at all these uh, groups of uh, kids on excursions. I guess there's like a specific day that everyone comes at the same time. But let me tell you, the, these streets with the shops They've been here for centuries. They've been catering to customers for centuries and centuries here in Kyoto. Of course, many of the shops are new now, but some have been there. Some have been here for literally hundreds of years. Okay, so I'm hoping it's not going to be like super crowded. When I was walking up the temple, it really was packed and I was having a difficult time uh, walking, you know, without uh, bumping into someone. See, all the kids are buying souvenirs. But you see how it is quite crowded today. If you guys are interested, um, I already made a video on some of the street foods like this place here. They have a yuba cheese uh, on a stick and it was delicious. And that video is on my other channel, I Will Always Travel For Food. So if that sounds interesting to you, check it out. Wow, very lively, isn't it? <laughs> but believe it or not, this street used to be more crowded when Kyoto was open to tourists. Well, Japan was open to tourists. Like this store looks fairly new, doesn't it? But this particular shop has been around since 1689. It's called Shogoin Yatsuhashi. They're famous for their um, cookies. And there are restaurants, there are shops on either side of the street. And you know, in the past, just like today, these shops cater to the people going to pay respects and make wishes at the temple. So this is just one of the streets leading to the temple. There are, I think there are three different uh, hills. Um, and we'll, we'll try to cover all the hills today. Skemono shop, pickled vegetable store. Oh, this place is amazing. Uh, chestnut soft serve. If that sounds like something that's interesting to you, try it. Give it a try. And you know what's interesting, for me at least? So this is the, the main street for all the tourists. If you kind of turn into one of the side streets, it's basically a residential area. 
with gachapon machines. But yeah, like like this is residential area. Here, let, let, let me just show you really, really quickly. I really hope you guys don't mind me giving you a tour of the side streets like I always do. But this particular street I discovered um, on my last to the last trip. These steps here sort of lead down the mountain to um, the street below. And th this is a street um, that uh, these are the stairs and the street, the small street that uh, residents use instead of using this street crammed with tourists. So guys, you know, one, one thing that I was uh, kind of curious about is how, um, how many tourists have come back to Kyoto? How many Japanese people are uh, visiting Kyoto? And I have to say, well, it depends on where. It depends on where you're going. Like obviously, I think if you take out all these kids on excursions, it'll be a lot emptier, you know? But uh, um, I, I do see, I do see some uh, Japanese tourists in kimonos. Obviously, there are no tourists from abroad yet. Wow. Uh, all the kids are on excursions today. And this is another thing I noticed. But uh, many, some of the shops are closed, like this fan shop. I noticed all the souvenir shops are open, but all the, the, the places selling traditional fans and things like that, I guess more geared for adults, are closed. There's a ceramic shop on my left here. Real quick glance, but we're not allowed to take photos. <laughs> so, and the lady was watching me. Oh, try this uh, Kyoto uh, Matcha Bomb Kuhin. It's good. It's really good. Now, here is a little uh, street here that you can turn into. And, uh, there's a nice tofu restaurant in this very historical building. It's called Goryokaku, right here. Look at this. And this building was designed by Professor Takeda Goichi in 1914. So it's a pretty old building, but it looks like it's closed today. Kind of. Yeah, it is closed today. Yeah, there's a sign that says we're closed for the time being, it looks like this on the inside. See, they kept the, uh, the, the old style. They kept the, the original decor of the place. See, it's a tofu restaurant and a cafe. But this is a really nice place to come to escape the crowds back there. Because all the crowds are back there and most of them don't come all the way here. So when I need a breather, I, I like to sit on one of these benches here and just kind of chill out. Yeah, until, you know, I feel okay again. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of nice, isn't it? Once again, this stunning building dating back from 1914. I love it. I really do. But yeah, this tofu restaurant is quite... Uh, famous for being delicious and you can even walk up here and I believe from here you get a gorgeous view of Kyoto or at least a view here we are ah <sighs> So guys, um, that's the slope, the little street I was talking about that all the locals use to go up and down the hill. Yeah, it's mostly houses and there's a cemetery over there. All right, let's go back down. Isn't this beautiful? I love this. A lot of people don't know about this little hidden spot. 
Alright, let's continue guys. I have to take you to the other slope. You know, I think I, I, I told you guys I might eat something on this video. I still might, but I already had a lot of food <laughs> filming the other video. Amazing food. I had um, that, that yuba cheese on a stick that I showed you before. Oh, that was so delicious. I love it so much. It's so good. The outside is crispy and the inside is soft. It's cheesy. It's a fish cake, but it's delicious. All right. I'm going to go back out to the main street and then we'll continue on. <laughs> Oh, this place right here, on my right, this place is also a shop specializing in pickled vegetables, the tsukemono, Kyoto style tsukemono. But they have uh, cold cucumbers on a stick, and they are really good. They really are. Um, they are seasoned in salt, and the one I got was like seasoned in the, um, it was seasoned in uh, soy sauce. But it was really refreshing and delicious. There's a little temple here. Okay, so this is the hill. One of my favorite... I shouldn't say hill. Uh, it's a path. So, um, this is the path called Sannen Zaka Path. Zaka means a hill or slope. And then, four minutes down, we're gonna go to a path called Ninen Zaka. But anyway, let's walk down this hill. It's, this is one of the most picturesque picturesque uh, stairs ever in Japan, I think. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? I love this. I love these stairs, these cobblestone uh, steps with uh, authentic Japanese architecture on either side of the street. Uh, Lawrence, that's, that shop is for you. Selling high-end bags. But... I do notice there are some shops like this one that's no longer open. That shop is permanently closed. This place, I used to always come here to uh, get some soft serve, but this place is closed as well. Hmm. I wonder if they're permanently closed or is today like a holiday. But anyway, the soft serve looks like that. Look at that. I love these so much. And they're delicious. Ah, and this store right here. But that lady is giving out samples of furikake. Amazing furikake. Oh my goodness. It's a little bit spicy because it uses a uh, sancho, Kyoto sancho peppers. But oh goodness, it's so oishi yo. Okay. And I believe, um, if I remember correctly, there's a Starbucks down the street. Here's another ceramic shop here. See, this particular shop looks really old, as well as this shop right here, right? Looks more like a hundred years old. Oh. oh, another thing people ask me about, like a lot of people ask me like, uh, who are the people wearing kimono? Like, are they locals or are they tourists? Um, most of them are tourists. Yeah, there are a lot of kimono rentals in the area. So. This shop here sells something called uh, um, not otabe, nanda kena. Oh my god, yeah, wasre chatta yo. I forgot, I forgot what you call it, but it's, it's these here. Ito ne. Oh my god, I can't remember what it's called. But this is mochi, and there is anko on the inside. And the original flavor has uh, cinnamon. And look, They've been operating since 1805. Very, very old company. It's delicious though. Yatsu Hachi, that's right. These are called Yatsu Hachi. <laughs> I swear, my brain is getting old. I can hardly remember anything. Okay, so th this is um, for Mindy's mom. And for those of you who might be wondering, what if I have to go to the restroom? You'll find this lantern here of Yojiya. And they're famous for like a uh, oil blotter for your face. Uh, you just go inside here and there's a restroom to your left. Yeah, 
So, no problem looking for a restroom. There's also another restroom facility behind me and to my left as well at the beginning of that particular um, uh, slope. The other thing that Kyoto is famous for is incense. And this particular incense shop is really, really nice. It's called Shoyedo. And they have a wide variety of uh, Kyoto incense. Yeah, and right now they have these um, um, autumn specific uh, aromas. And this is what I, I, I hear. I, I hear that this particular um, soba shop is delicious. It is on the pricey side, so. Ah, okay, Satoshi and I, we visited this particular shop the last time, right here. And they are famous for their um, warabi mochi and their mitarashi dango. It's good. This is another uh, shop that specializes in matcha. It's called Matcha House. If you're wondering how come there's like so many matcha things in Kyoto, it's because Kyoto is famous for tea. And this is a place I recommend. I came here earlier today and uh, I liked it a lot. I really, I really did. They have these mitarashi dango. They're kind of like rectangular shaped, but I had one of these sets. So good. <laughs> And of course, we can go on and on. I'm not going to introduce every single shop here. But as you can see, it's quite interesting to walk around. And all the shops, you know, they're housing these um, authentic Japanese buildings. And it's really nice. It's really, really charming. And this, Guy Matz, my friend Guy Max. Guy Max, you remember this shop right here? This is the Ume shop. And I believe he bought a box of Ume here and he proclaims it's the best Ume Boshi that he ever had. And seriously though, they are really good Ume Boshi. Like so good. Once again, on the pricey side, but absolutely worth it. Okay, now, um, the last time, uh, the last video I made, we ended the video down that street. So today, we're gonna go down this street. This is the Ninenzaka path. All right, so I haven't really shown you guys this particular uh, street. Oh, cute, look at these cats here. And someone asked me before, would you ever consider getting a cat? I would. However, I'm allergic to cats. Yeah, I'm allergic to cats. Like really, really bad allergies. Look how charming this street is. Okay. And I bet you guys can't guess what this building is right here. I mean, it's hard to tell, huh? This is a Starbucks, guys. This is a Starbucks. You can't even tell, right? That is a, that, oops, I almost fell. That's the sign of Starbucks. The seating area is, you have upstairs as well as downstairs. This is the, uh, the trash bins. Even the trash bins are kind of beautiful. And this is the entrance to this particular Starbucks. It's really nice. Don't you love how it doesn't even look like a Starbucks? You have to actually look carefully to see if it's actually Starbucks. First time I was looking for the Starbucks, I heard about this place. I couldn't find it. So I'm sure many of you guys who visit Japan often, I'm sure many of you guys have been to Kyoto and you've visited this place. What do you guys think? you guys enjoy walking around here? Do you guys enjoy coming to Kiyomizudera? Do you guys enjoy coming to Kyoto? And if you've never been here before, what do you guys think? Would you like to visit Kyoto? Um, you definitely should, you know? Something, another thing that people ask me is, um, 
like if uh, if it's my first time to Japan and I only have a week, should I go to Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto all on one trip, or should I just stay in Tokyo? I gotta say, you should just stay in Tokyo. Um, that would be the best bet. Stay in Tokyo, or if you want, if you prefer to experience this kind of Japan, maybe just stay in Kyoto for the entire week. I think you'll get a lot more out of your vacation that way. Uh, Tokyo, definitely. Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka in one week, that's, that's too much, guys. That's definitely too much. All right, so I'm gonna turn in here. Everything is just beautiful wherever you look. Look at this nice cafe here. It's called the Grape Wine Cafe. Hmm. Oh, they have wines here. How nice. All right, let's walk through this street here. Now this particular street, guys, I'm gonna talk softly because I believe this is residential with some shops dotted throughout like here like there's a sign that says no photography I think because you know that's a private residence so I'm not going to take it you know and here are some shops here on my right yeah no no photography of anything on my left side because that is a residential area I guess I can kind of understand. Can you imagine if your house is right in the middle of a tourist district? Here, this is one of the uh, uh, kimono rental places, if you guys are interested. Here's another charming cafe. Ah, this is nice. This is super nice, guys. This is my first trip out of Tokyo since the pandemic has started. And it's such a treat. It really, really is uh, to be able to travel again. And this is where we are. And then if you go down that street, there are even more quaint streets to explore. Oh my goodness, did they close here? I... Oh. Okay, this, this shop is called Omen and they're famous for the udon but uh, okay, so it's, wow, it's shuttered. So they said they'll be closed, this particular shop. They have another shop in, in, the, in the city area, so no problem, but it says that they will be closed for the time being, you know, because of the coronavirus most likely and no tourists are here. That's sad. Um, I especially like this particular branch of Omen. Once again, this, this place is called Omen. You can find this uh, udon shop uh, in uh, Kawaramachi area. Um, but wow, one of my favorite udon restaurants. I like this one because it was never that crowded and I, I like the atmosphere of this one. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, you know, I, I'm always a little bit uh, less sure of myself of where I'm going or what I'm looking at when I am in a different city just because I'm so not familiar with it like I am Tokyo but nevertheless I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys in my next video bye guys